five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. So enjoy your fruity pebbles, you yellow devil bitch! The God Almighty! The God Almighty! They're killing! MCM Punk, and I am the voice of the voiceless! Be the man! You gotta beat the man! Woo woo woo! No, I got okie doke by the Live from the Pro Wrestling Report Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This is Monday Night Meltdown with your hosts, Damian Nelson and David Hero. I'm proud to say we're doing things the Vince McMahon That's way. That's the bottom line. What? Cusco, go, Cusco. Bringing you all the latest news and views from professional wrestling, Monday Night Meltdown is on the air. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Monday Night Meltdown. We're live Monday, October 8, 2012. Davey and Nelson coming to you here with David Hero and Matthew Thomas coming off the heels of WWE Raw from Sacramento, California. Gentlemen, it seems like WWE did indeed execute a full reset, if you will, tonight off the heels of last week's Raw with a major main event matchup featuring Mr. McMahon, yes, the chairman and CEO of WWE, Mr. McMahon, one-on-one with the WWE champion CM Punk, and coming out of that matchup, we learned that CM Punk has a choice to make come next week on Raw from Nashville about who his opponent will be at Hell in a Cell, which is just that Sunday night. We're going to talk about that and a heck of a lot more. We're also going to be taking your phone calls, the number 877 877- Three one seven nine seven seven two. And while it was a monumental main event on Raw, I have a monumental announcement. I was wrong about Ryback. Sacramento tonight proved to me that Ryback is indeed over with the fans, and you got to give credit to WWE for all that they've done building up to this night where Ryback became somebody special in WWE, not only getting a nickname of Big Hungry, but he got fed more and fed a lot more tonight when he got involved in that matchup with CM Punk and Mr. McMahon and ultimately getting his hands on CM Punk, CM Punk running from Ryback again tonight. What an ending to WWE Raw, especially considering the build that they needed to WWE Hell in a Cell coming up in a couple of weeks on pay-per-view. David Hero, I'm going to throw the microphone to you because you have been a Ryback guy ever since you saw him on my initial draft pick list, and you stole him. But tonight, <laughs> All right. tonight was Ryback's night. The Goldberg chants were still there, but they were less relevant than the reaction of those fans in Sacramento. And I know a lot of smart fans, quote-unquote, don't like Ryback. Hell, I was that guy for a little while and up to tonight. But tonight, if you can't see the reaction that he got from the audience live on Raw and understand that he has made it, you got a lot more looking to do. David Hero, Ryback, the star of the night. You know what? The fans love Ryback. They connect with him. They, you know, when, when his music hits, Feed Me More is over like crazy. Wow. I mean, it it had, tonight watching it had that Goldberg-esque feel to it. And I know he's compared to him often, but you could feel it. There was something special in the air about Ryback. And you know what? I think the fans would rather see Ryback and Punk over C-Man Punk again. At this point, that is possibly true, but uh, CM Punk has that choice to make, and we'll find out next week who his selection is going to be. I think it's uh, there's a couple of scenarios that can come out of this. We'll talk about those in a minute. But first, Matthew, your thoughts on tonight's ending to WWE Raw. This man who brought it, by the way, to CM Punk, Kendo Sticks and all, and Ryback and John Cena getting involved in that matchup. And let's not forget the random fan who also got involved at the end of the night. Yeah, the Ryback pop, I just, it was a surprise to me. I did not expect it. And it's always good to see Vince come out. You know, it's not going to be a five-star classic by any means, but when he gets in there and mixes it up, there is always that entertainment value there. But here's the question that's going through my head as I'm watching this. Is there a possibility that Ryback at no point has really been, the end game hasn't been to thrust him into the Hell in a Cell match per se, but maybe this is just a grand way of getting him over, of 
kind of silencing those Goldberg chants a little bit of make, giving him a little bit of viability by throwing him into a main event program like this, even if it's not ultimately going to uh, include him being in the Hell in a Cell match, at the very least by having him involved in the level and the capacity that he is on, you know, as high up on the card as he is at this point, at least there seems to have been something accomplished by, by getting the guy over. Yeah, absolutely. You make a tremendous point. That may not have been the goal, but they are in a pickle as it pertains to the John Cena situation. Look, there is no way, shape, or form that John Cena is ready for a one-on-one matchup with anybody in a Hell in a Cell at Hell in a Cell in a couple of weeks. Let's just realize that and come to grips with that fact now. But if you're WWE, they've got to keep John Cena in the mix because he sells tickets. Is This could go a couple of ways, David Hero. We could have a three-way between Ryback, Punk, and Cena, which protects Cena, obviously. Or it could be Cena and Punk, which is, again, I don't think there's a chance that's going to happen. Or it could be, as we've seen, and as I think the fans are now ready for, Ryback versus Punk. in a, a story that doesn't have to go much beyond October 15th, but one that, at least as of now, is intrigued, intriguing to a lot of fans. You know, you, you, Matthew, you mentioned about with... Vince McMahon in the ring, you're not going to get a five-star match. No, you're not. But what you're going to get is a match that has emotion and a match that's going to tell a story. And you, when was the last time you actually believed two guys hated each other in the ring and were actually fighting? I mean, we've seen street fights. We've seen hell in the cells. We've seen last man standing matches. But I don't think we've seen a match with that much emotion in a long time. And, Everything they did tonight, from having John Cena start off the show, having Ryback come out second, how both guys passed on the ramp, almost like, okay, hey, you know, and and how they acknowledge each other is to build Ryback. Then to have Ryback come out there and save the beloved Vince McMahon, the CEO of the company, the guy that put over the WWE Universe as the reason why this company works, then they have John Cena come out and help Ryback or help Vinnie Mac get CM Punk to Ryback. There is no way that Ryback and CM Punk do not have a pay-per-view match. And you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb. They may have no choice but to put that belt on Ryback, at least for a month or two. What? What you talking about? Hey, you know what? If you, put, if you have Punk versus Ryback in a Hell in a Cell... How does Ryback lose? If he loses to Punk in a Hell in a Cell, then this undefeated streak that that they've been building for so long now means nothing. He does become garbage if he were to lose to Sam Punk in that Hell in a Cell matchup. There's no doubt about it. You're exactly right. And that means the number six pick overall on Team Super Friends becomes the most valuable commodity in all of 2 Yeah, but you got Punk too, right? So it's uh, a net gain of zero. You're just not yeah, very strategic, it, but be that as it may. It's the same spot you're in right now with Jeff Hardy and Austin Aries. Oh, I'll be fine. No worries there. I've been, no I've been strategizing. It'll be fine. What but we also want to know about Can is, you imagine? Can you imagine? And, and I've said this before. Imagine the creative meeting. And, 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 let's, and let's not forget, there's a huge creative shake up right now on the Raw and SmackDown brands, and we'll have, we'll have a far more information on that on Saturday night's prime time, but there's a whole lot of shenanigans going on there. But imagine Punk being told you're going to do a pay-per-view match with Ryback, and you might have to put him over. <laughs> you talked about that last week on prime time, I believe. And uh, while it is an interesting scenario, let's let's again be real here. John Cena's injured. Then he is favoring that arm, isn't he? There is some Absolutely. Tron Jedi-ish kind of kind of gimmick up on his arm, and I don't know if you noticed it when he put a punk in the ring. He was very uh, very cautious to use that arm. Yeah, not only that, but uh, let's not forget the controversy after this surprise surgery occurred with WWE saying two to three weeks or two to four weeks, which was convenient enough for Hell in a Cell, and John Cena saying six to eight weeks. Yeah, there's some, as you would say, David Hero, there's some uh, great kabuki going on with that whole thing. But, Matthew, Vince McMahon brought it tonight in the ring. 
And uh, Vince McMahon, clearly the fan favorite, the fans behind him in Sacramento. And Jim Ross just sent out a tweet that says, and I quote, uh, last few minutes of Raw might not have been pretty, but it had hashtag attitude. There's no doubt about that in those last few minutes of Raw. From the crowd to the action to the participants to the commentary to the atmosphere, everything was clicking quite perfectly, I must say, in Sacramento tonight for those last few minutes of Raw. And Damian, let's not forget October 30th is the WWE 13 game that is heavily based around the Attitude Era. So what better way to jumpstart that than by throwing that hashtag Attitude around a little bit tonight? Absolutely. Oh, from from the start of it, you know, from him, from Punk jumping McMahon on the, as he was making his entrance, it was stiff, it was rough from the start, and what keeps going through my mind is you've got this guy, Vince McMahon, 65, I think now, a billionaire, and he is putting himself out there through these physical paces that he does, something that he most certainly does not have to do, but going out there taking a beating as we have seen him do time and time and time again. You just you gotta have you gotta have the utmost respect for the guy going out there and putting himself putting himself through a stiff match once again. Vinny Mack proved tonight he is the star of his own company. Because you watch tomorrow when the ratings pop, it's gonna be over a three. And that's gonna be a big jump concern there a two and a half last week. People tune in to see Vince McMahon, and you know what they did? They did it. They did a fantastic job. Vinny Mac was on Raw when Monday Night Football started. You throw in CM Punk, a little bit of John Cena, Ryback. It, it almost felt like the Monday Night Wars that last five minutes of the show. Let's be real here, though. WWE, as you said, got a 2.5 last week. They were up against a very big game on Monday Night Football. Tonight, while I don't disagree that Vince McMahon equals ratings, Do you think there was a little bit of that ego, a little bit of that I'll show you what I want to his staff backstage? Uh, Because we talked about that shakeup that may or may not have occurred. We're still figuring out all the details of what happened with the WWE creative team tonight. But Vince McMahon went out there and not just showed the audience and the fans at home what he can do and what he expects, but he showed everybody in the back as well. And David Harrell, you sent out a tweet about why Vince McMahon was out there. But the question I ask both of you is was this a message to the back? Was this a message to everybody in WWE? Because Vince has done this before. He went out there and he performed. He had the audience in the palm of his hand, and he delivered. I'll use this word, but he delivered excellence, not in his wrestling ability or whatever, but capturing the crowd, building that emotional connection. He delivered on all cylinders tonight. You know, Vinnie Mac, you can put him in the same light as a Shawn Michaels, as a Stone Cold, as a Rock, as an Undertaker. Not as an in-ring performer, but as an in-ring character. And Vince McMahon, that name still draws money. And he went out there and he showed that entire locker room that at 70 years old, yes, it's his company, and yes, he may be far more invested in it than anybody else in that locker room, but he went out there, busted his ass, told a story, got the crowd behind him, got the crowd involved, and wow, what he did a fantastic job. For almost 70 years old, he went out there and took an ass kicking. You know what was interesting, Matthew, is when Vince McMahon first came out and was interrupted by CM Punk and they talked, and, uh, you know, Punk slapped Vince, Vince oversold. But Vince got up Way and oversold. said, yeah, Vince got up and said, I ought to fire you, I ought to fire you, and actually I will fire you unless, if you don't, get in this ring and fight me tonight. I was shocked by the reaction of the live crowd. They ate that up. Yeah, I don't know that there is anybody out there that – you put them off a of TV for three or four months, and when they come back, they get as big of a pop and as big of a response as Vince McMahon. Whether he's out there cutting a promo or, as the crowd saw tonight, competing in live action, I think that he is off of television enough now that when you do have a Vince appearance, much less uh, Vince competing in some capacity like he did tonight because the crowds know that he's going to go out there 
and he is going to go through the paces, and he is going to have a tough, stiff match. So they know they're in for a treat, and they know with it being such a rare occurrence as it is now, they have really lucked out, and they're there on a special night. We're looking for your feedback on Twitter, at PWR Show on Twitter, whether or not you thought tonight's Raw was a pass or a fail. We've got a lot of feedback coming in right now to our Twitter feed. Again, that's at PWR Show on Twitter. Also, want to welcome all of you on here who are ta- discussing tonight's Raw live here on Blog Talk Radio in the PWR chat room. Some amazing discussion going on there. Feel free to join. If you're listening to us here on Blog Talk Radio, just hit that chat now link, and uh, you'll be taken right into the chat room. We spent a lot of time talking about CM Punk and Vince McMahon tonight. While that was the highlight of the really the way Ross should have ended tonight, there was a lot more that happened, including John Cena returning to Raw, saying at the top of the program that he wants CM Punk in that matchup at Hell in a Cell. David, is this a smart strategy by WWE? They know John Cena is not going to wrestle at Hell in a Cell, at least in a singles matchup. And I talked a little bit about it earlier, but a direct question to you. Is this smart for them to basically be baiting the audience with this question of whether or not CM Punk will accept the challenge from John Cena while knowing all along John Cena is not going to participate in a one-on-one match with CM Punk at Hell in a Cell? Well, you know, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference simply because they need John Cena to be on TV every week. They need people to see him being part of the show. And right now, they're going to use John Cena to help make uh, Ryback a stronger baby face than what he already is. I mean, when the kids see that Cena and Ryback are pals, much in the same way, you know, when you had, and I guess for WCW comparisons, I got to oh. compare, you know, WCW, I got to say that John Cena could be DDP and Goldberg, uh, you know, and Ryback are similar, where, you know, they were a team, they were unit. they may not fight together all the time, but they both have the common enemy in CM Punk. Listen, John Cena's not going nowhere. He's the he's the goose that lays the golden egg, but right now they have a potential uh, huge payday with Ryback and Punk. And I'm telling you, I think people are will be excited. And when I say people, I'm talking about the general casual wrestling fan. I'm not saying... And all the fans that listen and watch us, they would rather see Daniel Bryan against Punk. That didn't draw the rating. But the kids are behind Ryback. Uh, the guys are behind Ryback. And uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting, Hell in a Cell, when the main event, Ryback versus CM Punk, with the undercard of Big Show, another giant in Sheamus. Matthew, we just got a tweet here from uh, one of our uh, followers named uh, Dan Saint five eight seven nine at Dan Dan Saint five eight seven nine says, "Do you think this could lead to a Team Heyman versus Team Vince match at Survivor Series in Indianapolis?" A, an interesting question because we did see face to face interaction with Vince McMahon and Paul Heyman tonight, and uh, you know there's been talk of a Heyman team or a Heyman faction coming to be. That could be interesting going into the Survivor Series, which we haven't heard anything about from WWE yet, which is a little intriguing. Yeah, it's certainly a possibility, and I think at this at this point, it's still a little bit hard to project and predict. But yeah, and that's one thing that I did really enjoy was the Vince Paul Heyman interactions tonight. I thought the few that we saw it really added to the build of. Punk and McMahon tonight, and it goes without saying, though, but Heyman just, he adds so much without having to even say a word. Seeing him out there tonight, and, and the way they've been shooting the the Punk promos here recently with Heyman kind of over his shoulder in the corner of the screen, really just, he, he doesn't even have to say a word on the mic, but just his right. being there can add so much to whatever story they're trying to get out there. So if you do go that route and have a Heyman team, I think anybody that is associated with it can really benefit because he just, he's adding, he has the potential to add so much to any given program. You know, the the approving or disapproving nod and or facial expressions by Paul Heyman without him saying a word shows his wisdom and you can see that the mind is always working, and just his uneasiness with the way Punk conducted business tonight, I think just his expressions 
told a far better story than anything he could have said in the ring. It, it amplified it. It, it puts the exclamation point on what we were to believe at home. And one thing that stuck with me and was profound was when Punk attacked McMahon before the match started as McMahon was walking to the ring. A few seconds later, walk, walking into the frame with the WWE Championship calmly was Paul Heyman. It was perfect. It's, the, it's, that, it's those details that, uh, that WWE is generally so, pretty, so good at that they delivered, and Paul Heyman delivered so well tonight. Well, gentlemen, as we continue to compile your feedback on WWE Raw, again, on Twitter, at PWR Show on Twitter, was Raw a pass or fail? We'll have the results for you shortly via your retweets. Uh, we also had Larry King appear on WWE Raw tonight as uh, his new show, Larry King Now, available on Hulu. He appears with The Miz as his guest and then Kofi Kingston. And then Larry's 92nd wife, actually throws a cup of water into the face of the Miz, leading to a bit of a brawl between him and Kofi Kingston. And you got to wonder... His wife buried everybody in that entire segment. Okay, so how? How did she do that, David? She did. She became the segment. She was just the arm candy. She was, you know, she was the parsley on the plate, and all of a sudden she becomes, you know, the biggest part of the whole angle right there. You didn't see that? You didn't see no, that? No, not at all. Well, my monitor went out during that uh, particular uh, you item did. you're referencing. But, you uh, know, Kingston has been appearing lately, or at least over the last, uh, this week, without our truth who earlier in the night provided me with great comical joy when he was in the ring with Brodus Clay. And in addition to JBL saying Brodus Clay looks like a combination of Free Willy and Latoya Jackson, <laughs> when our <laughs> truth was dancing with little Jimmy. <laughs> That was just brilliant. I mean, when they were doing their kid and play routine? Exactly, yeah. There was no reason for them to even be in the ring, to be honest with you. But it was just so well done. Again, the comedy piece that you need uh, on Raw. But before that, we saw Ryback de- demolish both Primo and Epico. And Ryback was very impressive in that outing, um, in that matchup, much more so than his inter- uh, altercation with Tensai last week on WWE Raw. I hate to continue getting back to it, but a lot of people are reading into this, and perhaps they should. But, Matthew, we heard during CM Punk's interruption of the State of the WWE address a long, a long amount of talk from CM Punk about Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, this makes, I believe, the third week in a row or so that CM Punk has mentioned Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, this is not new. Punk and Austin have interacted before, whether it be on social media or even on television, and some are saying that might lead to a wrestling matchup. Now, I don't want to go that far, but what do you see into these comments of CM Punk continuously referencing uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin? Well, as you said, we've, we've heard it before, we've seen it before, and at first I thought maybe it was just him kind of acknowledging those murmurings and people wanting to see something up the road with Austin Punk but we've seen it, what seems to be so frequently now, and like you said, Damien, tonight, it wasn't just an off-the-cuff reference. I mean, it was a fairly elaborate, like, little mini promo there cut on Austin. So with the frequency we're seeing it and with the time that it was given tonight, you've got to wonder if there's not maybe something up their sleeve. And, and that's really where you've got to leave the show. It's with speculation. And uh, we just want to thank uh, one of our uh, Twitter followers, and uh, just a moment, we'll retweet it here, uh, just submitting us some video of what a lot of, uh, you know, the news sites are reporting as, you know, the controversial end of CM Punk, quote-unquote, attacking a fan. Well, we're going to let you judge for yourselves. We have the Zapruder film, uh, frame by frame, the Zapruder film showing uh, exactly what happened, courtesy of uh, one of our followers on Twitter. And, as we can get that here, uh, we will retweet that out so you can take a look and uh, see for yourself. Actually, we're going to take a break, actually, so we can do that. We'll send that out via Twitter again at PWR Show on Twitter. And uh, we'll talk more about that when we come back. In addition to your phone calls and a little bit of discussion on this Thursday's Impact Wrestling with the man they call Meathead and more here on the Pro Wrestling Report, Monday Night Meltdown. We're live on Blog Talk Radio, and we'll be back in just a minute. Monday Night Meltdown continues after this, live on Blog Talk Radio.
covering pro wrestling like no other. This is Monday Night Meltdown Live on Blog Talk Radio. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report. Monday Night Meltdown, Damian Nelson, joined by David Hero and Matthew Thomas. We're live on Monday, October 8, 2012. And uh, before we took that time out, David Hero, a couple of uh, followers on Twitter, shared with us the video, at least the clip of uh, what a lot of people are talking about, which is CM Punk and an altercation with a fan in the arena in the crowd in Sacramento. Uh, I want to thank, send thanks to at McFly2312 and at uh, Chosen Boy, C-O-H-O-Z-Y-N Boy, on Twitter who sent us those videos. We're going to let you decide. You can watch it for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. We'll talk about it more on uh, uh, primetime. We'll talk about it more on primetime on Saturday. What was that, David Harrell? He lit him up. That's all I'm going to say. Interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out next week. You can do that as well, but it, it takes some, uh, it takes some, uh, it's, you know, I'm going to analyze this along with the uh, CSI team that I have available here to the PWR show uh, group and uh-huh. uh, just see what actually happened. Okay. But well, be that as it works for you. A lot more did happen on Raw tonight as we were talking about before the timeout, including the advancing to the finals of the tag team tournament by Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio and the team of the Rhodes Scholars. They will wrestle next week on Raw to determine who will be in the finals for the tag team championships against Team Hell No. Team Hell No tonight uh, in a matchup against... Dolph Ziggler and Alberto Del Rio, the Kane and Daniel Bryan getting the win in that matchup. And uh, one interesting thing, when, I think it was uh, uh, Michael Cole who compared ADR's entrance to JBL's entrance, and JBL pretty much put him in his place by saying, well, the difference was I didn't have to drive, <laughs> which was brilliant on JBL's part. Um, Antonio Cesaro defeats Tyson Kidd. Lots of controversy being stirred up over the results of this matchup. A lot of people saying Tyson Kidd not getting what he should have gotten in that matchup, meaning time-wise. But I thought Tyson did shine, and he was doing exactly what he needed to do in that matchup for the purpose of the match, which was getting Antonio Cesaro over and have another solid showing for him. He took on Caitlin with Layla on commentary, and as we've been talking about all night, the main event... CM Punk in his, and I quote, ugly shirt, that's what Vince McMahon said, his new shirt, versus uh, Vince McMahon in a fight. Ryback, the real star of that segment, in addition to Vince McMahon, tonight you all, all over the world, are telling us what you thought of Raw, whether it was a pass or fail via Twitter. We've got a couple phone calls we're going to get to right now to hear from one fan who thought Raw was a pass and another who thought it was a fail. Let's first start with Arthur in Bloomington, Indiana, who wants to tell us why he thought Raw was a pass. Arthur, you're live here on Monday Night Meltdown. What's up, Damon? What's up, David? Hello. Hey, my man. Uh, it was a pass because after seeing Mr. McMahon swinging that season four game like a, like a, like, like no other, like, um, like, um, Albert uh, Pujols, I said, Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Vince. Keep on going. Do not stop. And um, when um, when when a uh, right back came out, I I was happy. I was happy uh, even even uh, more. And when he just ran off, I said, "If he picks right back, my money is on right back." Now I got a question for uh, both of y'all. Ever since Heyman came back, do y'all think we will see the resurrection? of the dangerous alliance? Uh, I think, uh, thank you for that call, Arthur. I think that's highly unlikely that we will see a, a resurrection, a, 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 uh, we'll see the dangerous alliance back, but a Paul Heyman stable? That probably might happen. I think so anyways. I'm distracted right now because David Hero, you know, screw the Zapruder film. We just got another link to uh, look at that clip of uh See a punk's incident with a fan at ringside, and uh, that that's that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> yeah, things. So, oh my goodness! He looked. Yeah, first. that guy did nothing wrong. Uh, whether he did something wrong or not, Punk looked first before he threw that punch and threw that elbow. No, right he, there. no, he didn't. He didn't look at all. Oh, he looked. 
Well, again, we'll talk about that on Saturday's prime time. We'll have footage as well to share with you and take a look at it. Oh, bad. Oh, that is all bad. I want to thank Twitter user at DisturbedXPunk for sending that out. We're going to retweet that right now so that you can get a, uh, a look at it. Um, and again, decide for yourself that uh, this clip does not uh, leave much to the imagination, especially if you look at what happened before the elbow was thrown, because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whoops. Anyways, um, wow. That is uh, not going to end well, David Hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, or as they say, that's going to leave a mark, right? <laughs> Someone's um, going to WrestleMania, that's for sure, on Vince's dime. <laughs> <laughs> Disneyland is so close. Let's go to our uh, next caller. Uh, Raw was a pass tonight, and uh, we haven't heard from this caller in a while, at least on this broadcast, but uh, let's talk to Curryhead from down in Memphis, Tennessee. Curryhead, you thought Raw was a pass tonight. Welcome to the oh, show. Hey. What's up? What's up, guys? Hold on one second. Marriott, not T body. Marriott. Go, go. Yeah, it was a it was a I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, man. A working man never stops working, does he? <laughs> you got that right. What's up, Damien? How you doing today? I am I couldn't be any better. I'm simply tremendous. Oh, good, good. Hey, hello, hello, Matthew. How you doing? Hello? Matthew, he'll be, check with him on Thursday. All right. And how are you doing today, David? How are you doing? Man, man I am doing absolutely, tr- I'm doing far better than that guy in, you know, that, that, that yeah, CM Punk. Yeah, I saw that, that tweet, man. I saw that tweet. I guess somebody, I guess CM Punk on cap it, and Vince going to have to cut a big check tonight. Mm. Boy, this going to. Oh, I guess he's going to get a sweet like y'all, like y'all going to, that he's going to get a sweet at the, at WrestleMania, at WrestleMania in New York this uh, next year. You might have better seats than us, Damian. Who knows? <laughs> We've got our own section, Section 217 yeah. in the club level. The might club get suite you, might the get your own section. you might get your own section, but he's going to get his own suite. I guarantee you that. But let me get back mm-hmm. to the show. Reason why, but let me get back to this, what I came to call you about. This was a this was a past and I say it was better than last week, and I was going to, I did call last week, but Blog Talk was hating on y'all, and I couldn't get my response to that, but I won't get mention that, so I won't mention that, I won't mention that. I just want to say this, this I, I like Goldberg Jr. Goldberg Jr., at least, at least doing it right then, better than they have been doing in the past six months, and, and I hate comparing this man to Goldberg. And he's not Goldberg. Goldberg had a was better, had a better run that first year. Had a better run than Ryback for this for this reason. Ryback's first six months until he had, uh, first six months he did not have any uh, competition. He was dealing with Indy. Since he since the last couple of weeks, since they figured out that he's going, they're going to put him in this match. And I know CM Punk. Is man, and I know one of he. That's probably the reason why he was hitting those fans because he got realized he got to face the <laughs> green. I'm sorry, but he got to face right back in probably one of the most hardest matches to to deal with in a cage. I would hit him too, but let me get back. But let me get back to what I was talking about. Right back is is still green, and and he might win this title. Did you did I hear you say that correctly, Dave? That he might win this title. Uh, you know what? After what we just saw, I think there's a very good chance he might. Win <laughs> Dave, 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 Dave. I'm being honest. Why would you want this green guy to win this title? I know he's hot, but he's still green, and he 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 he, he, he he's terrible. He's a he's not a terrible wrestler. I'd rather see some. I know. I, I understand that Cena is is hurt. I understand that he he and he's, he's on his no team. different than Goldberg than the Ultimate Warrior. Hold on, no, 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 no. Let me. No, I, I'm before I before I call up. I disagree. Goldberg at least. Hold on. Goldberg at least worked with the talent that Goldberg worked with that taught him in that ring was quality talent. Was was a humorous. Besides, Mongo made Michael was facing top main uh, lower mid card to jobber enhancement talent. 
When has mm-hmm. Ryback besides hold on, besides besides this tag team he faced tonight in Tensile, what other talent did he face that whole time that he has been on T V? You ask me that question. He's been facing well, Indy Well, if you, if you think about it, the talent today today is far di- is far different than what Goldberg had. But how many times did you see Goldberg wrestle the same guy over and over again, whether it be, you know, Raven or Conan or Mr. Perfect or William Regal, guys that, guys, they always put Goldberg in the ring with guys that could carry him. And, you know, Primo and Epico, they're they're pretty solid. They're they're a a good young tag team. They are second generation. They know what they're doing in the ring. Uh, I mean, you you can't compare the talent from the Monday Night Wars and you know to the talent that they have tonight. Thank you again for that call, Curry. Hill. David Harrow, we are going to. Uh, well, this has turned into an interesting development here of what happened at the end of Raw. Uh, what we want to make sure we share with you though is what's going to be happening come this Thursday on Impact as we are full steam ahead to TNA Bound for Glory, which is this Sunday night on pay per view. Let's take it over to the call Meathead who co-hosts with me, uh, Matthew on Thursday nights, Sudden Impact Radio Meathead. What we have in store for us this week on Sudden Impact Radio, and what should we be looking for on Impact Wrestling Thursday night? Well, you know, it's kind of a, uh, a lame duck episode of Impact. It's the show before their number one pay-per-view of the year, so you're not going to get any you know, huge uh, ramifications coming on of Impact tonight. It's just a uh, be safe, don't hurt yourself. We've got our WrestleMania coming up this Sunday. I mean, we're going to have interaction, obviously, with Hogan, with uh, Sting talking about aces and eights. We also got, you know, the final showdown before the match between uh, Bobby Roode and James Storm with Special Enforcer King Mo. So there could be interaction there. Plus, you know, you got Jeff Hardy. You've got Austin Aries for the World Heavyweight Championship. Like I said, it's you know, it's a lame duck episode where you know you're going to watch. There may be some interaction. There may be some aces and eights involvement because they've got the big tag match. Thing and Bully Ray are going to take on two members of Aces and Eights for the opportunity to come and go as they please in the Impact Zone. So it's definitely still something to watch, and make sure you're listening in Thursday night right after Impact goes off the air, and we'll break down the pay-per-view. Plus, uh, Damien, what are we doing for uh, post-show? we got a post-show this Sunday after the pay-per-view? Of course, it's Bound for Glory, the biggest show from TNA Wrestling of the year. We will be doing a post-show right after the pay-per-view right here on Blog Talk Radio. Perfect. Thank you, Meathead, and then again, Thursday night, 9 o'clock p.m., you and Matthew doing a great job with that broadcast on Thursday nights on uh, right here on Blog Talk Radio and also available on our website, pwrshow.com, and on Twitter, I'm sorry, and on YouTube as well. Twitter is just going crazy, David Hero. Uh, look, here's the one piece of this video, and right now on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash pwrshow, we're asking you to watch the video, decide for yourself, and comment there as to whether or not Punk was wrong for doing what he did, keeping in mind, you only saw, you didn't see all of it. You saw part of it, but you're going to be able to make the decision on your own and uh, make a uh, determination there as to that. Sweet and sexy New York City, David Hero. We talked about it last week on Primetime. We have secured more tickets in the PWR section, section 217. It's in the club section, VIP entrance. You get access to the club suite. You're going to be joined by myself. David Hero, Linda K. You get a ticket to the shenanigans party. You get a free PWR t-shirt. All that available right now at PWRshow.com. Limited quantities available. Several people bought tickets tonight. Several people will buy tickets tomorrow. Don't miss out. This is your last chance. We're not getting any more tickets after the ones we have now are gone for you to participate in WrestleMania 29 and buy tickets one month before they go on sale to the general public right now only from the Pro Wrestling Report at PWRshow.com. Again, PWRshow.com. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh out loud, but I just hear a whole bunch of money getting flushed down the drain right now on Titan Towers. Because <laughs> you know it's gonna be all over it's gonna be all over the media tomorrow. It'll be on CNN, it'll be on Fox, ESPN. Yeah. You know what? You know better when you send talent into the crowd, especially after something like that, where you get a but ton of heat a, on, you know. We've seen it happen, though, David Hero. They do a great job at that normally. 
they're doing, they, there's an advance team out there clearing a path. They they mm-hmm. they have security in place. The arena staff knows where they're going to go, what they're going to do, and whatnot. And you can't you can't avoid everything. But in general, no. they've done a good job pre- preparing the area in advance of these type situations. The whole story is unknown. You can decide for yourself by watching the footage right now on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash PWR show. We'll talk a lot more about this, of course, on Saturday night's primetime oh, television. Oh, absolutely. But let, we may even have let, to do a little 10 minutes more on this one. Let's not let this overshadow what was a solid ending to WWE Raw, where Ryback, big hungry, if you will, got fed, and his uh, meal was in the form of CM Punk tonight. The question that will be answered next week on Raw is who will CM Punk choose to face at Hell in a Cell? Will it be John Cena or will it be Ryback? If he doesn't make a decision, then Vince McMahon is going to make a decision for him. You all on Twitter, 95% of you saying WWE Raw gets a pass tonight. The highest we've had in a very long time. Only 5% of you saying it gets a fail. A solid Raw tonight. Your final thoughts on Raw, David Hero, overall. You know, I thought I thought Vinnie Mac definitely raised the bar on Monday Night Raw tonight. It was a solid show. And you know what hurts me the most, Damian Nelson, is you completely ignored perhaps one of the best matches on Raw, which was Sheamus and Wade Barrett. Sheamus did a good job, as did uh, the attack after the matchup on Sheamus uh, by not only Big Show, but also... But also, it was right solid. Senpai, your guy. The whole the, the the whole thing was solid, and let's not forget, there was also a Super Friends sighting in Sacramento. I didn't see one Nelson family shirt, by the way. You didn't see them because they were all in suites. That's in the nosebleed uh, you know, camera, like your like your peeps. Anyways, we've gone too long. We've gone extra long. This show's over. We'll be back on Saturday with Prime Time, but before that, Thursday night, it'll be Sudden Impact Radio with Meathead and Matthew. And David Hero, as we talk about this whole CM Punk fan video, maybe it was a work. Maybe the fan was planted. There's Again, no way that was a work. Did you There's see no the look of terror on Vince's back face? Back into the left. Back into the left. Back into the left, back into the left is the way that man's head went when, when, when CM Punk hit him with that elbow. There had to be, there had to be a second fan just out of camera range. That's all I'm saying. Or else that's one magic elbow. We'll talk much more about that Saturday on Primetime. For David Hero, for Matthew, for the band they call Meathead, this is Damian Nelson saying thank you so much for tuning in here live to Monday Night Meltdown. We'll see you this weekend for Primetime. So